Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We head straight to our second conversation where we look at the fight against corruption. Now, if you follow very well, when President Mohamed Buhari uh, came through in 2015, one of his campaign promises was the fight against corruption. And uh, that has actually, to some people, recorded some kind of success. And to others, it has been very biased. Now, just to you know, fast forward to what's been happening, there's been several reports from the Auditor General of uh, several you know, fonts that have been uh, misused by different bodies and what have you. Uh, we're just going to be looking at you know, the fight against corruption uh, according to the uh, President Mohammed Buhari's campaign promises. How far have we fed? And we do have a gentleman who will be joining the conversation this morning. Al Fal, uh, we have uh, Awal Rafan Sanjani who will be joining the conversation this morning. And we also have AZ as well, Oye Perry. Uh, he's also a guest uh, joining us via Zoom. Good morning, gentlemen. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. All right, so um, let's start with Ibrahim Musa. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. All right, then. So h how would you describe, you know, the fight, uh, the fight against corruption? I mean, uh, the President Buhari administration, he came through power and he said that uh, one of the things that he would do would be, you know, fight corruption. There have been a lot of persons that have been mentioned, list of governors, I um, mean, some cases have been convicted, but to some people, he has not been very fair. Uh, there's been some kind of uh, unfairness, not balance, uh, you know, the fight against corruption. But really, really, for the past years that we have right now, six and counting, uh, how far would you describe the fight against corruption of President Buhari? Well, I think the fight against corruption under this administration still remains um, a campaign, more of a campaign issue, because uh, the government actually did not prepare to really put in place system and processes and uh, even, you know, strengthening the legal framework to fight corruption. It was a very juicy um, topic or issue to convince Nigerians that um, because Nigerians are really sick and tired of corruption and they just capture that uh, sentiment and moment to build on, on their campaign. So if you look at the government uh, effort in terms of uh, its fight against corruption, it didn't show that in-depth uh, commitment to really fighting corruption because so far legal system or uh, existing legal system that needed to really uh, help to deepen the fight against corruption have not been really taught. Uh, we're still talking about uh, you know the government that is fighting corruption without whistleblowing uh, regime. We're still talking about a government that's supposed to be fighting corruption that still lapses are uh, there in its operation uh, in the fight against corruption. We struggle as civil society to uh, convince the regime to have national strategic um, uh, document on the fight against corruption. But that document, you know, has remained more of like a, uh, just one of those uh, documents that have been kept, you know, in the shelves. Uh, thirdly, there's no way you can fight corruption when procurement system in the country remains one of the worst um, system that allows more corruption uh, in the place. As a result of the corruption, deepening corruption in the country, the insecurity in the country has rather become more uh, vulnerable because procurement of um, arms that are supposed to be uh, bought, I'll never see the, the light of the day. Just recently, uh, as part of this audit report, uh, under the police, we were supposed to have equipment and uh, facilities for the Nigerian police. 10 contractors were supposed to be given that contract. Only one person came up with 10 companies, same name, I mean, the same addresses, the same telephone number, since 2019, nobody has brought in any items, and this was of billions, and uh, nobody is saying anything about that. 
There's no way you say you are fighting corruption when virtually everywhere uh, in the government, either at the federal, at the state, and local government, corruption, you know, is really happening in, with impunity. So in terms of legal framework, we have legal framework that is completely not being respected or regarded. The public procurement law, the physical responsibility, the even the you know, each law, and quite a number of the anti-corruption you know framework that's supposed to help the government is completely in disregard. More importantly, the code of conduct that is supposed to even be supported by the government to really fight corruption. Because if you are talking about fighting corruption, the code of conduct must be strengthened right now as I speak to you. They don't have even resources to even investigate claims of the public office, or you know, uh, who is supposed to file their, uh, you know, uh, access declaration. So, if you are talking about fight against corruption in Nigeria, you are going to look at various um, aspects. What, in, when you look at it, it didn't really tally, despite the commitment made by the President Bahari in 2016 in the anti-corruption conference um, in London, which Transparency International and British government organized. All those issues that the Nigerian government committed to up to now, we have not seen the seriousness in which the government is even dealing with it. So in totality, when you look at the fight against corruption of this administration, I think you know it remains at just efforts to recover assets that have been stolen by corrupt leaders of yesterday. And today, looters are busy also struggling to loot the recovered asset. And that is why right. you do not even have a legal framework on how to manage uh, the recovered asset. The asset will be recovered and it will be looted again. So the part against corruption of this administration, it has remained, as far as I'm concerned, um, a campaign you know, um, issue. In terms of practicalizing it, we have not seen seriousness at what the government is doing. Previous oh. administration have ensured that we have even the legal framework. Under this administration, even the Auditor General Office that is supposed to be strengthened to make sure that you know it is really um, given the kind of pie that we are looking for, it is not being given that much attention and consideration. So corruption is going on you know, with, with impunity in the country. And government cannot be telling people that they are fighting corruption. Every day you open newspaper, you listen to radio and TV, you know, it is about looting and corruption in public sector. So there's no way this All right. government All right, can um, claim uh, Mr. Rafsanjani, uh, kindly hold on. Let's let's bring in um, Eze Onyekbere, who is also part of the conversation this morning. Um, Mr. Onyekbere, I want, I want you know, us to focus on the Auditor General's angle, because in the last few days, like I mentioned earlier, um, the Auditor General's Office has put out its report for 2021 um, and um, even previous years, you know, and has detailed billions and billions of naira that seem to have been, you know, simply, you know, misappropriated, um, you know, from the police to the National Assembly to customs and immigration and the likes. Um, but we currently are in a country that would hear about these funds being missing, misused and, and whatnot. And no, nothing seems to happen. There is no further investigation by the um, corruption agencies or by the Nigerian government. We simply just move on like it's a part of our lives to hear that billions of Naira have gone missing. Um, so, Mr. Ekber, what then is the use of the Auditor General's office if the government doesn't bother taking action? Good morning. And uh, let me start by saying that corruption has been institutionalized and made systemic in Nigeria by the present administration. It was very convenient for the government to simply use the mantra of fighting corruption to win elections, and thereafter, like a piece of paper, put it back into the shelves, lock up the shelves, and forget it. Now, coming strictly or straightforward to the office of the Auditor General, it was the after the Auditor General finishes his work, the PSC Public Accounts Committee in the Senate House of Reps, was bound, we are bound to take it up, look at the issues further, and ensure that public monies have been recovered. 
But now the 2019 report is telling us about what is going on, the fraud going on in the National Assembly. That raises a very big question. If the National Assembly that is supposed to be uh, to exercise oversight and help in recovering looted funds is now deeply immersed in corruption, then there is a very huge challenge. If you recall, the Auditor General's Office is not just like any other uh, anti-corruption agency. It's not politicized. It's a very professional office where what they simply do is to look at your records and accounts as presented by the office. They look at it vis-a-vis -vis the financial regulations and the various laws and policies on uh, financial prudence and anti-corruption. And once they find a gap, what they simply do is to send an audit query. And an audit query is simply to say, please explain what has happened. We think you have violated these policies or laws. And it is only when you fail to provide satisfactory explanation that the Auditor General now puts it in his final report, which is forwarded to the National Assembly. And the expectation is that all those that were indicted will definitely be made to answer and provide any other information they have to the EAC, following which the recommendations of the Auditor General will be implemented. Unfortunately, we have a year after year repeat of the same felonies, financial felonies and misdemeanors. All the offenses you found that were committed in the 2016 audit report, you find them repeated in 2017. You found them repeated in 2018, as well as in 2019. So the question is, what exactly is going on? The Auditor General is supposed to be a very big bulldog that can bite. But in Nigeria, we've rendered uttered office toothless that it can no longer, you know, give sanctions. We have a situation where what we are even discussing are those who have managed to report. Over 260 something agencies, as reported in the last Auditor General's report, simply refuse to report. Because what we are discussing is that if I report, then you begin to look at the infractions I've committed. If I fail to report, if I know I've committed big financial felonies, I'll simply ignore you have failed to report, as many agencies have done. And there is no penalty. Nothing is even done against those who have failed to report. And unfortunately, the Auditor General either forgets or fails to even put the name of those agencies that have failed to report in his report. So we are only discussing those who have reported. Those who didn't report, nothing is happening to them. The National Assembly under Saraki had amended the audit law, okay, brought forward a new audit legislation with two cognizance of best practices in modern auditing. And by that, it gave the Auditor General powers to sanction. It also freed the Auditor General from going cap in hand to the executive to beg for money. I mean, you can imagine that agency that comes to your accounts to use a toothpick and comb it. If you are also the one to give it the resources to comb your account, you will definitely underfund it because you know that you are being corrupt. And the more you empower that office, definitely the more likelihood that somebody in the office or you yourself will go to jail. So there has been a deliberate attempt to underfund the two constitutional anti-corruption agencies. These are mainly the Code of Conduct as well as the Auditor General's office. So the president even refused to give assent to that bill as was sent to him by the, the Eighth National Assembly. And the current National Assembly, from the last Auditor General's conference, the conference of the Auditor General for the Federation and that of the 36th State Auditor General, the president simply said that they are still considering an executive bill to send to the National Assembly. So even the private member's bill in the National Assembly is terminated. Nothing is being done to checkmate it. And beyond the Auditor General, let me give you one more instance of the most grand corruption going on in Nigeria. In 2015, before the current administration came in, Nigeria was reported to be consuming about 35 million liters of PMS every day. Yes. And on the basis of that, mm -hmm. subsidy was being claimed by both the NMPC and other private persons who were important. Fast forward to today, we've had two recessions, more factory closures, greater unemployment, you know, so we are now being reported by a NMPC, which is now the sole reporter, as doing between 55 and 60 million liters of PMS. Daily. Yes. You consume PMS when there are more cars on the road. You consume it when there are more factories. You consume it when there are more people in jobs. So there is about 25 to 30 million liters of PMS upon which a NMPC is fraudulently claiming subsidy. And that's why we have this subsidy shooting up to almost 1.8 to 2 
trillion naira every year. So in essence, right. what is happening is that corruption has been systemized, corruption has been made systematic by the Buhari administration, despite all pretensions that they are fighting corruption. All nobody right, hold on is fighting Sanibere. corruption. It's a huge joke and scam. All right. Okay, so um, let's also bring him, uh, bring in Ibrahim Musa now. The anti-corruption crusade of this administration is hinged on um, several policies, the whistleblowing policy and uh, the biometric data verification and the treasury uh, signing, uh, account signing. I I'd like you to, you know, share your thoughts on this. How far do you think this has actually, you know, helped in the fight against corruption? Well, um, the biometric, you know, uh, that's the VPN um, bank verification uh, is actually introduced by the previous administration and um, uh, the current administration continue with that, which is also good. Uh, but the single treasury account was also introduced by this government. But however, um, analysts, you know, have come up with uh, facts and figures that uh, the single treasury account, it doesn't simply even work because many ministries and prestators, they have found a better way to siphon public taxpayers' money. What they do, they create what they call um, project account, and this run into billions, uh, you know, and this project account is handled by individuals and, uh, you know, uh, corruption and diversion of these funds continue unabated. Uh, so, yes, the government uh, claimed that they want to introduce also blowing policy. The also blowing policy, it has also more of like debt. It's a debt um, uh, policy because it is not being practicalized. It has uh, lost all the necessary ingredients for any serious whistleblowing blowing you know, um, regime to have. We have a deal in the National Assembly introduce under the um the previous administration the government did not support it did not back it to have a legal more sustainable legal framework because the policy that you have now is not being actually practiced and is not even a you know um it doesn't meet the best international uh practice which we also know so the fight against corruption of this government, that's why I say they are ill prepared. They just, you know, um, use that sentiment of um, the fact that corruption is a major, uh, uh, you know, problem we have that, you know, stop development or that even create the insecurity in the country. And they capitalize on that and, you know, so far when it comes to real practicing the um, fight against corruption, you don't really see much. Uh, you have a situation whereby people who are even under this administration, they are being accused of corruption and shamelessly they are not even bothered, they are not even uh, bothered to resign. Many of them are uh, there, you know, uh, enjoying themselves and some of them who are under this administration, working under this administration, they even appeared in one of the global scandal, uh, which is um, Paradise and Panama and you know, uh, 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 all sort of global scandal, and nobody has asked them to resign. Nobody has asked them to explain what they have done, and yet they are serving under a government that is fighting corruption. Like I said, flagrant abuse of public procurement law is going on, you know, um, in this country. In fact, some of the ministers who have been accused by this government, that is just to tell you how this government, you know, is taking anti-corruption as a joke. You accuse some of the people that you are that they are serving you here yesterday of corruption, and today they are made ministers. They are made to have high-profile position. So how will ever somebody how will ever somebody take you serious that you have ministers who their cases are still in the you know um, anti-corruption and even in some of them in court. And yet they are the one now rolling the government. This is just a joke. So right. I think, you know, in my opinion, the current administration is not prepared to fight corruption in Nigeria. They are only focusing on recovering assets stolen by the yesterday looters. And today looters 
are in charge of it. That is why today, up to now, nobody will tell you how much asset have been recovered domestically and internationally. Okay, and um, as a matter uh, of fact, Mr. as a matter of fact, uh, we apologize because we honestly have just about a, um, a minute left um, on the conversation and I want uh, to bring in Mr. Onyekberry, um, you know, for some balance uh, before we say goodbyes this morning. Um, so, Mr. Onyekberry, please um, share with us because obviously this is a conversation that could go on for hours, um, just looking at the debt um, through um, to which it goes and, you know, the, the massive, massive corruption that we're talking about here. Nigeria still is going out to borrow money from international organizations and from the from other countries uh, to fund projects. Um, Mr. Eric Perry, can you, in any way, just in, in a minute, Max, you know, share with us the, the, the um, amount of corruption, you know, that we're dealing with here and how much more value we would, how much more money we would save if we simply put systems in place to stop these things from happening? Well, definitely, we can save money running into trillions. For instance, in the first subsidy scam, we could possibly save more than a trillion if we simply declare the PMS we are consuming and focus the subsidy on it. Secondly, we could also gain about two trillion in new revenue if all ministries, departments, and agencies and parastatals are put on the actual TSA, not the kind of TSA my brother Rasanjani is talking about, so that all government revenues, like now there is a rule that you don't spend more than 50% of your revenue. 50% comes to government, 50% you can spend. If all these revenues come to government, you will get an additional about $2 trillion. So it will reduce the money if we are actually to go out to borrow that we need to borrow, or we may even don't have the need to borrow again. All right. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really sad um, story. And once again, you know, the reason for this conversation is, you know, was, um, you know, a lot of questions as to the relevance of the Auditor General's office and the Auditor General's report. Um, you know, and if, if a government doesn't take action after such damning reports are put out, then of what use really is that office? Um, and, and, you know, how sincere really is any government that says it is fighting corruption? Um, Eze Yekperi, thank you very much for your time this morning. We look, I look forward to speaking with you again. I would like uh, to have another conversation on this. Uh, and of course, uh, Anwal uh, Ibrahim Musa Rafsanjani, who is um, Executive Director of CISLAC and Head of Transparency International Nigeria. Thank you very much also for your time. All right. Uh, I think we've lost sound from there. Thank you also uh, to our viewers this morning um, for joining us and for being a part of the conversation. If you would like to catch up, if you missed out on any of these uh, discussions, you know where to find us, simply. It's at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And do not forget to subscribe to uh, YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa, uh, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle as well. I am Messi Boko. Do have a fantastic day ahead. And I am Osao Ogbawa. Good morning. <laughs>